very interesting time in the UK for research and innovation at the moment. So just over one year ago, we formed a new organisation called UK Research and Innovation that brings together all of the uh, previous research councils and our innovation activities into one, one body. Uh, what this is enabling us to do is to try and join up all of our research activities. So that includes joining up what we do in, say, particle physics, big science, with what we do in life sciences, and, and includes the arts and humanities, history and philosophy, and brings that together in one body. Um, so it's a very, very, very exciting time. So what it enables us to do is build those connections between different research activities, which sometimes have been, been forgotten. The other thing that's particularly interesting is our, our government has a policy called the, the Industrial Strategy. And the aim of the Industrial Strategy is to raise uh, the amount of money spent on research and development within the UK to 2.4%. So that's both public money and industry investment. That's a significant uplift from the current amount. Um, and as UKRI, we're looking to plan for how we would actually deliver that uplift in a cost-effective cost way and deliver the maximal benefit for that. So there is, at the moment, there are, there are new funding opportunities that have come through the creation of UK Research and Innovation that are actually allowing us to do more research, more science, more, more, more um, cultural activities, but also more, more directed innovation activities, building, building up, building up uh, in industrial capability. So very exciting. So part of that, we're, we're putting together the first UK research and innovation infrastructure roadmap. So it's our long-term strategy. Um, this is a really piece of, interesting piece of work that I'm leading on behalf of UKRI. So it covers both our national facilities, so the things we build um, nationally, for example, um, at the Harwell campus where, where I'm based, we have the diamond light source, a big synchrotron, a neutron source, and some very powerful lasers. But also then needs to connect them to our international activities, uh, for our engagement with other countries, uh, bilateral relations with different countries, and engagement with big international projects like CERN or LBNF June in the States. Uh, and that balance is part of, part of the, road, the road mapping activity. And I think one of the things that's interested us as we develop the road map is it doesn't matter which area of research and innovation you talk about, it could be the life sciences, biology, it could be physical sciences and engineering, or it could be the arts and humanities or social sciences. They keep coming back to us with common issues that they th think are important. Um, there are three of them I'd want to highlight. One is skilled people. There's no point building stuff if you don't have the skilled people, um, particularly not just the scientists, but actually the engineers and the technicians. Uh, that's one key area. Another key area is, is the need to be international, uh, increasing need to be international. So research and innovation is now a global activity and the UK wants to be a part and a, and a driving force behind that global activity. And again, that crosses all areas. And the final one, um, which pervades absolutely everything we do now, is not sure what the right word is, big data, artificial intelligence. But that is impacting everything we do in research and innovation. It's changing the way we, we do our research and we, we benefit from our research. So as part of our road mapping, our planning activities, our plans for e-infrastructure, um, uh, big, big data, kind of cross cuts absolutely everything we do. So it's a very, I think it's a very exciting time to take a strategic look at that, that, that whole area.